Hello, everyone, and welcome to Healing Wednesdays. Over on Facebook, it's your girl Amber, aka Watch Amber, the co founder of Herpes Can Never. I've been called to help women feel unashamed, empowered, and worthy, and I'm using my real life experiences to do so. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited to have everyone here. Make sure you tap in the comments and let us know where you're tuning from. I'm going to hand it over to um, Euphoria. Welcome, Queen. Rich in Divine Risings, everyone. It's Euphoria, the breath where God is here. Um, as you all know, people who have been here for um, weeks and weeks, I uh, main focus is breath work because when we control our breath, we control our reality and our spirit. Um, breath work helps release tension in the body, which helps relieve stress in the body. And stress is the number one cause of herpes outbreaks, guys. So we have to release that stress. I want to express gratitude to everyone for joining us today. And also gratitude to Amber and Shana for allowing me to be on this platform and share healing breath work ex exercises with you all so that we can all heal together as a family. Because today and in here, we are heard, seen, and loved. Shane. Thank you, Queen. Thank you. Rich and Divine Rising, everyone. My name is Shana Singleton, aka the Herpes Goddess and founder of Herpes Can Never. I have grown the largest herpes awareness community of over 248K. The mission is to make everyone feel uncomfortable until our cousins in the Herpes Can Never movement feels comfortable being open about their status and proud of their sexuality. I'm so happy to have you all here with us on Wednesdays. On Wednesdays, we are here to heal, heal through herpes, heal through the stigma and just self-care. I'm going to swing it back to her euphoria so she can get us started with our breath work. All right, guys. Um, for everyone who's been here, you all know we're moving through the chakras. And I have my notes here because I don't want to miss out on giving you guys any information that I've picked up myself. So today, we're focusing on the throat chakra. As you guys can see, it is here on my chakra diagram, located right at the throat area right here. The color of focus is blue, hence all the blue today. Um, first off and foremost, we're gonna go through a few crystals you can use to effectively help open up this chakra. Crystals are called or named turquoise, aquamarine, amazonite, lapis lazuli, angelite, sodalite, and blue apatite. I might not have said that one correctly, but Today, I have soda light here. As you guys can see, it does have a blue tone to it. But of course, with many min um, natural minerals, there can be different variations in colors and stones. Um, this particular chakra deals with speaking, expression, clarity, truth, and purpose. This energy vortex is associated with clear and conscious communication with others, which essentially allows clarity within yourself that will transmute into your outside aura. So the exercise that we're going to do today is not like our usual exercises where we just do breath retentions and things of that nature. It's actually going to be a chant, a chant that you're going to do. And I'm going to play that right now so we can get started. Okay. So it's just going to go like hara, 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 hara. And you want to let this play in the background so you can follow. And feel the vibrations in your throat when you're releasing. Literally feel the energy pour out of your throat when you do this. So I'm going to put my crystal in my eyes and I'm going to close our eyes and really catch on this particular one here. Let's get started. And breathe into the nose.
exercise for breath work. Ladies, how do you feel after that breath work exercise? Thank you, Queen. Always feel good. Always love it. Um, I'm going to ask for you to, real quick, if you can point to the chakras, okay, as I go through them. For those of you not familiar with your seven chakras, you have your root chakra, what is it? The bottom, it's red. Um, you have your sacral, sacral chakra that is orange. That's right above your root chakra. Then you have solar plexus, which is yellow. You have your heart chakra, which is green. You have your throat chakra, which is like a light blue. You have your third eye chakra, which is a darker blue. And then you have your crown chakra, which is a purp- which is purple. Now, today I am going to go over five affirmations for each chakra. We always work from the bottom on our way up. If you're doing chakra work, you can't work from the crown and try to make your way down. You literally have to work your way up to unlock those chakras. Okay, so root chakra, affirmations for the root chakra. I am centered and grounded. I love being in my body. I have everything I need. I am connected to nature. I am safe. Sacral, sacral, however you want to say it. I've heard both. Um, Affirmation for that root chakra. I am creative and joyful. I embrace my sexuality. Honor my desires. I am playful and spontaneous. I deserve to enjoy life. Solar plexus, yellow. I feel my power. My potential is unlimited. I honor myself. I accomplish tasks easily. (sighs) Can't see. I act with courage. All right, heart chakra. I love myself and others. I am an expression of love. I am worthy of love. I forgive myself and others. I follow voice. I follow the voice of my heart. Next, the throat chakra. I hear and speak the truth. I live an authentic life. My voice matters. I have integrity. I am open and honest. The third eye chakra. I am insightful and intuitive. I see clearly. I think clearly. I trust my desires. I expand my awareness. And last, the crown chakra, purple. I am divine. I am a spiritual being. I am one with all that is. I am infinite and boundless. I am at peace. 
All right. So those are my affirmations for the chakras today. I will post that on our Patreon available for tier two, <coughs> tier three Patreon members. Amber? Thank you so much, Queens. I love that. Oh, I appreciate you both. And so I'm going to make in the vein of affirmations because of the value of speaking affirmations into ourselves, into our lives, and how important and integral that is into our healing. So, um, every day I read from my little calendar, um, you are a badass. It's kind of like an affirmation in itself. And today's was right on time. It's for Wednesday, May 12th, which is today. And it says this, one of the best ways to reprogram your mindset is through affirmations. Pay attention to what falls out of your mouth and what pops into your mind during meditation. And if it's negative, rewrite it with new words and thoughts that transmit positive feelings and say these new words over and over and over and over and over. And so I know how much, I know how big of a role affirmations played in my healing and still play into my life. And I like to say and give the example of how for the entire year of 2020, one of the affirmations I had on my bathroom mirror was, I am a speaker, I am an author. And I was saying it in real time, in, pre in the present tense. I am a speaker, I am an author. Now, at, current, at that time, I was neither a speaker or an author in that present moment, but I spoke those things to be because that's what I felt for my life. And then fast forward to 2021, Shana and I have one book and we have another one on, a way, on the way. So I literally am an author. And so the power and the value of our words. So I have a little exercise that I want to encourage you all to try in your own healing in your own time. So I want you to write down a few things that come to your mind that you deem as true. And unfortunately, most of the time, the things we think that are true are negative or have negative connotations around them. For example, if we're talking about, um, you know, our herpes, one thing might be herpes ruined my life, or I hate the fact that I have herpes, something along those lines, a, a truth that's, that you deem true to you in the moment. I want you to write that down in pencil. Then underneath it, I want you to write in ink for every one truth, which is essentially a lie, I want you to write three actual truths. Herpes is not gonna stop you from living your life. Herpes did not ruin your life. Herpes is not the end of the world. So things that counteract what you wrote down in pencil. And then I want you to erase what you wrote in pencil. I want you to read what you wrote in pencil and read what you wrote in ink. And so basically I'm, you're, we're getting into this habit of reprogramming our minds, the things that we think negative thoughts, reprogramming them with actual truths that are positive. Because when you start to do that, when you start to think about yourself, when you start to think about your herpes, when you start to think about your reality in a positive way and speak those things and think those things, you'll be surprised and amazed how they actually affect your life in the moment, your reality. And before I got diagnosed with herpes, I really wasn't a big proponent of affirmations. I'd heard them being talked about. I knew what they were. I even might have dabbled into them, but I never actually believed in their value and their power until I got put in the position to where all I had was those words and those truths to hang on to until they actually became what I believed and what actually manifested into my life. So affirmations are something that have transformed my life, my mindset, and um, what I think about myself, what I think about my herpes, and what I think about the stigma overall in general. So it's something we all have access to if we intentionally put it in as a part of our routine, as we put it in a part of our meditation. And so um, I want to encourage you that what you think is what is what will be. Um, and that's what I have affirmations have changed my life and the value in saying your affirmations and believing those things about yourself. Thank you, Amber. You said a mouthful. Um, when you said it was hard to believe them at 
at one point. And that's yes. why it's so important to raise awareness to our thoughts and our self-talk and how we, you know, what we speak into our lives. We have a trigger journal that does just that. It's going to ask you very triggering questions. So you can write down on paper how you truly feel and reflect and read it out loud and see how you think. I didn't believe into affirmations until I saw how I talked to myself. I heard myself through prayer and I saw it through journaling. I read my journals out loud and I didn't like what I was reading. I didn't like what I was saying. I didn't like what I was speaking into my life. That's when I started to believe in affirmations. Well, damn, if I can say all this stupid stuff to me so naturally, it just comes out. I'm just beating myself down, self-sabotage 100%. Why can't I speak something different into my life? Why can't I say something different? Even if I don't believe it, I'm going to just say it because I'm tired of saying, oh, I'm worthless. Oh, little things of, I'm not a good writer. I'm a bad speller. Shit like that. I don't like to eat that. I don't like onions. I don't like, little things like that are all spells that you are speaking into your life. It is your reality. It's your illusion. 90, we spend 90% of our lives in our head, people. So where we stand in our life is a reflection of our mindset. If you don't like the reflection of your mindset, you can do something about it. You can change that. You can practice affirmations to change your self-talk. You can practice journaling to raise awareness to the areas you need to love yourself more in, the areas where you need to change your self-talk in. You can't just, oh, I'm going to give me some affirmations and start saying it. No, where are your affirmations coming from and what do they mean to you? And what, what in your life are you replacing with those affirmations? Why do you, why is it so important for you to say those affirmations to yourself? Make sure they're personal to you. And that's the importance of writing down your limiting beliefs. I coach this to my clients all the time. I need you to write down everything that limits you. As simple as stuff that you don't like, or you're scared of a spider, write it down and then write the complete opposite. After you write your limiting beliefs, you have to say it out loud. Hear yourself say it. And then after you say it, say it again and say, I want to get rid of it. And then tell yourself what you want to replace it with. I know spiders sound simple, but it is simple. I used to be afraid of spiders, you guys. I told myself I was afraid of spiders. So that was my truth. The minute I started telling myself something different, every time I was with a spider, I, I, I was a little bit more brave. I seen a spider, instead of me running running around the house like a wild banshee for something that's this little, I'm not even afraid of a big giant human, but I'm afraid of a little ass spider <laughs> running around crazy. The first time I, I didn't run around crazy, I sat with it. Who, there's a spider. Let me tell somebody, come kill it for me. Then the second time I was confronted with a spider, I'm like, Okay, maybe I can kill this myself. I got a Lysol bottle. I probably poisoned the shit out of that spider. And then I hit it with a sandal. And then the next time, instead of poisoning the spider, I just hit it with a sandal. I was scared. I was flinching, but I did it. Then the next time, instead of me flinching, I killed the spider. I am now at the point where I don't even kill spiders anymore. I take a cup and a little sheet. I put them in and I bring them outside now. All because I I put it in my affirmations and I spent a lifetime scared of spiders. That is the power of the tongue, you guys. Euphoria. Okay, guys. So I love how both of what you guys are saying is tying into the throat chakra because once balanced, it's so easy to tell the truth. You see value in your story and understand the impact that it has on other people's lives when you truly unlock and balance the chakra. So even you sharing your um, experience with the spiders, um, you, Amber, sharing your experience with just understanding how affirmations has changed everything for you. Guys, sound vibrations with intention can literally change your lives. So that pours into what we're talking about with affirmations, what Shane is talking about with the spider story. I even used to be afraid of spiders. Like I would, that was speaking to me, literally this interaction right now that we're having, us sharing our inner truths 
things that we thought made us weak or really things that we had to experience in order for us to truly find our strength. So now that we found our strength, guys, we just wanna tap into that story and share it with you all. So for me, right, my truth is when I was afraid of spiders long ago, right? I was like Shane, I'd kill spiders, run, do all that, right? But then there was this one day where I had to sit with a spider outside and I was like, I saw it, I got afraid, but I was like, I'm not going to mess up its web. I'm going to sit here and watch the spider and learn from the spider. I ended up seeing a reflection of, of myself in the spider, being that the spider was this small and it seemed like the web she was creating was so small. I'm like, why does she keep doing that same thing over and over again? What is she doing? Then I don't know where the spider just drops big pivot down. I'm like, oh my God, where did the spider go? I got scared. I'm like, <gasps> almost tap back into my old self. But then I saw the spider was making a web that was so colossal that only if you sat there and truly watched and tapped into the, what was going on, you wouldn't have understood. You have to literally sit down and watch to see the intricacies of how a web is being made. Spiders are beautiful organisms. And I was so afraid of them, but now I'm realizing there's so much truth of myself in a spider and its existence. And even when it comes to herpes, guys, the ability to come on here and share my experience of herpes being diagnosed at 17, both strains of um, HSV, you know, things of that nature, just being able to share this story openly with you guys and just understanding that everything that I experienced, I experienced for the ability to be in this position to share my healing with you all so that you guys understand that healing through herpes is not going to happen in one day. It's not going to happen in one month it can still happen and you have the power to take on that responsibility for yourself and say today I'm going to heal whether it be through breath work affirmations a combination of all the above um life coaching motivational speaking whatever you need it is available for you through the herpes can never <laughs> platform but also through other app outlets <laughs> everywhere guys just tap into your truth to understand that even your story how you're experiencing herpes can affect someone that you may not even think of. Like you telling your story might assist your cousin or your, your you know, so a stranger even. Just being tapped into your story and telling the truth. And every single thing, whether it be a blemish to you, it might be the one thing that literally saves somebody's life. So just wanted to add that, guys. Thank you, Queen. I love, I love that. And I love what you said. Hey, I, spiders are amazing. Like them creating their web. I know exactly what you're talking about when the spider like drops. And I've seen that happen before in the creation of a web. It's like fascinating, but <clears throat> you said something so good that I was going to touch on. It's about your healing. It's not going to happen in a day. It's not going to happen in a week. It's not going to happen in a month. There is no set time parameters around your healing. It is a journey. And I think when people come to our community, our cousins and those, you know, who aren't cousins yet, but soon will be, um, they want, I feel like maybe this, you know, pill that's they take in there. Everything's all better. The stigma's broken in their lives, you know, reality, they're fine. And that's not how it works for each of us. It is a personal experience and journey that we are meant to go on with ourselves to learn specifically about ourselves. Shana's journey was different than my journey was different than Euphoria's journey was different from your journey. But in order to get to the place where you can see your herpes for what it's truly meant to be in your life, you have to commit to go on that journey with yourself and not compare your journey to any of ours or anyone else's. It's a super personal thing. And <clears throat> excuse me, I think a benefit maybe that I had that this, this community wasn't available when I was healing was I really didn't have anybody else to compare it to. You know, you see Shana and I, Euphoria, and we're talking about our herpes like, you know, I have herpes like, you know, I can say it anywhere, anytime, any place. And that could be a little intimidating to people who aren't quite there yet but it's just let this be a source of encouragement and light for you. But also hear us when we say that we each spent significant time doing work on ourselves um, with things like affirmations, with things like doing our breath work and having meditation and really tapping in and looking inwards into ourselves with prayer, 
with self-development, with, you know, some of us might be like therapy, counseling, whatever the resources that we each needed um, to, to get to a place where we had changed our mindset around herpes. We changed our mindset around the stigma. You have to go on that journey with yourself because that's, it starts with here, it starts with you think. And then what are you saying? What are you saying about yourself? What are you saying about people with herpes? What are you thinking about yourself? Because we touched on it last night in our Patreon call. Shana really hit a good point. It's like, if you, I want you to share Shana what you shared as far as our thoughts around the people who did not, who didn't disclose to us, which is why we have, you know, some of us have herpes because we didn't have, we didn't get that conversation owning ownership we both didn't have that conversation and here we are but what do you think about yourself you have herpes what does that mean to you when you think about that because what you think here is usually what comes out of here and what and that's the reality that you create so I just want to encourage you that there is no it's a it's a marathon it's not a sprint but you have to commit and decide to go to that space with yourself so that's what I got thank you what Amber was talking about is I say that a lot of us within the community, we blame the person, we blame someone else for our herpes and we get so mad. They call it the gifter. Some people don't like that word, but we get so mad at our gifter. Why didn't they tell me bastard? They intentionally gave it to me. And yet we cry about disclosing. I'm so scared to disclose. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to go about it. I don't want to do it. Da, 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 da. Well, why don't you think that way when it comes to your gifter? Maybe your gifter felt the same exact way as you feel right now. Take a moment to just pause your anger, pause your emotions so that you can just think clearly, think logical. That feeling that you're having is the same feeling that your gifter has. It's the same feeling that feels the stigma. It's the same feeling that you believe in the same thing that you need to change for yourself in order to break the stigma for yourself it's the bigger picture let's talk about projections we also worried about what other people have to say about us number one when people are judging you they're telling you how they judge themselves so never take it personal two if you do take the judgment personal it's because you believe it to be true that's a hard pill to swallow. But if you take the, can't nobody tell me I'm dirty, my love. Guess what? Because I ain't. It's not true. But if someone's telling you that and it's breaking you down and it's making you feel awful, it's making you feel disgusting, it might just be true. That's an area you need to explore. It's an area you need to do the self-work in. That's an area you need to journal about. We're talking about the throat chakra today. I was unable to unlock my throat chakra the minute I came out about my herpes. Truth spilled out of me like a waterfall the minute I decided to be an advocate. It was the one last thing that was holding me back. Now, let's talk about our healing. When I opened up my throat chakra, I was able to move forward with my, the rest of my chakras, my third eye chakra, my, count, my crown chakra. <coughs> excuse me, y'all, excuse me. But let's really talk about the healing and the work that we need to do. When I was healing, it wasn't for my herpes. I didn't start my journey to get over the stigma. I started my journey because I realized my energy that I was keeping and how it was affecting my son. When I had low energy, my son had low energy. When I had high energy, my son had high energy. So it was important for me to learn how to protect my peace. In learning how to protect my peace, oh, I had to unload so much BS about me. I was a victim always. Everything that went wrong in my life was due to somebody else. But at this moment and in this time, I took accountability for it all because I lacked self-love. Now, before, when I didn't lo love myself, if you told me that I didn't love myself, I would probably go off on you. You mean I don't love myself? Yeah, I love myself. Da, 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 da. You see that projection? You see how I took it personal? You see how I ran true for me? 
Can't nobody tell me that now and me be mad. I'm just going to laugh at you. You don't know me. You don't know my life. You don't know my journey. Like, boy, bye. People go, Shayna, how are you able to handle these clapbacks so gracefully? Because I am secure. Can't nobody tell me about me. I am my own baby. That's how I'm able to handle the cap clap back so gracefully. Because I know that when people judge you again, they're just projecting their own judgments of self, their own insecurities, their own misery. Misery loves company. It spreads. Energy is contagious. Remember all these things. It's better to protect your peace and protect your energy always. And I'm just going to end it there because I'm ranting now. <laughs> I love that. Uh, go ahead, Euphoria. Okay. Um, before I stepped off, Shana said something that spoke to me, right? Yesterday, I was in the Target, in the line, or excuse me, Target. <laughs> but um, I saw a lady in front of me who um, I wasn't judging. I was observing at this point. Um, I saw she had on a tight dress and she had a little bit of her midriff out and you could see the fact that she had on a certain kind of underwear underneath, whatever, right? And I just observed it as, hmm, maybe she thought she looked nice today. That was just me observing. So the people behind me began to start speaking like, wow, da -da -da -da, clearance looking, da -da -da, you know, just speaking all kinds of things. And I knew that they were trying to project how they were, how they were talking onto her. And I could start to see how her body language changed as they were talking and how she ended up putting her jacket on to cover herself and all these different things. And that spoke to me when you said, Shane, um, Shana, I said about that. I was about to say Shamber again. <laughs> when you, Sh uh, Shana, when you said, um, you don't believe anything that people say about you unless you really feel that or you really think and believe it to be true. And that made me think about another instance even. There was a time where I went into Home Depot and there was a person like, oh yeah, some, some nappy head, something. And I'm like, at that moment, me being in that position, I knew how that woman felt. Because the woman, the person said that, and I'm like, either they could be talking about me, they could be on Instagram looking at something. But either way, I don't think my head is nappy, so it doesn't even matter. This was a test of my capacity to believe something true or just ignore something about how someone else may feel about me. And when I have started to practice that, because things like this started to happen as soon as I got diagnosed with herpes, guys, like, I would hear people talking and the conversations around me started to seem like they more so related to me. And I just couldn't understand because I'm like, what in the world? But then I realized it's all a test about what you truly can believe about yourself. So like Shana said, if you don't believe these things, they no longer affect you. But when you are in a headspace at the beginning of my healing journey with herpes, I did believe a lot of these things that people were saying. It was starting to feel like weighing heavy on me and my, my heart space and my shoulder space. Like I started to feel like even my own posture, like just crunched down. It wasn't until I decided to take that journey and say, I know myself. I am me. I am euphoria. That's when I came up with the name euphoria. I'm euphoria. When people are around me and we have conversations, everybody's laughing. It's always joy. It's happy. So why would I let all the things that happened around me change me? The fact that I can still be me regardless of all of these things is an even bigger teller of the truth of who I truly am. And I want to just perpetuate that energy, not the energy that someone's actually trying to disturb my peace. Because it's like, why would you want, why do you even want people to know that people are trying to disturb your peace? Just be peaceful. Because if you're truly yes. peaceful, oh, that's nice. Okay. And then you move the next step. You, like, you don't let things consume energy in your conversation space. And especially when we're using a throat shock, or we got to remember to not engage in conversations that can alter the way that we feel about ourselves. And the second you start to feel that movement of that energy inside of you, where it's like, I'm uncomfortable. You can feel that, look at it and say, why is it making me feel uncomfortable? And just ask that question to yourself. It's okay. Like literally I do this throughout the day. Why do I feel like this? Okay, so let me change that perspective. Let me mold that into what I want to see instead. I don't have to believe anything except for what I want to believe. I even had this conversation with my son and his friend yesterday at the park. They're like, you look like you're 19 years old. I was like, I appreciate that. You got so flattering. <laughs> I, I really do appreciate that, but I, I'm not 19. Well, then you must be an old lady then. I'm like, no, I'm not an old lady. I'm still a young lady, but I'm not, a, I'm not a teenager though. 
you know? And I said, and you guys should know these things about yourselves. Like, who are you? And I started to ask the kids because until we really master that chakra and even the belief system, we no longer, we, we, we can't even say that we've mastered emotional intelligence because you can't be emotionally intelligent until you understand where your emotions are stemming from. And it usually all started when we were children. The things that we spoke to ourselves that our parents spoke to us, that our friends told us and things that happened on the playground. And when someone pushed you, you remember that one time you fell. But That's so when you become an adult, you can change that. Just That's say. so true. That is so true. It's so true. It's so true. I used to love to dance. I still love to dance now. And um, this is way off of what I was about to go with. But um, it, as, a, as a little girl, I danced all the way up into the military. And um, I got into a relationship in Hawaii. And I did one dance. And my boyfriend told me I couldn't dance. And then from then, I just lost all confidence. Like, I stopped dancing. I stopped even trying to dance. I couldn't find it. So dance meditation was a lot. It, it, it had a lot to do with my healing and my journey to get back to who I was and where that came from. But on the topic of triggering statements and how they make us feel, I'm going to um, reread this post that Rich Post and responded to that is a little bit triggering for the herpes community. Um, it says, this is from Kayla Clark, a little girl named Kayla Clark on Facebook. Um, she puts, I'm sorry, but people who are positive for HIV, AIDS, herpes, or anything that is not curable should be on a list and it should be public knowledge. So many people think, oh, I don't have, an, have a breakout. Let me go ho. There are so many positive cases, it's sickening. What makes it worse is they don't care about spreading it. I know my thoughts. What are y'all thoughts? <laughs> she sounds ignorant. <laughs> That's my initial thought. <laughs> ignorance is bliss. Because I mean, the comment is like a list. What is that going to really change if you really have this idea in your head that that's how people are acting? What is the list going to change? Okay. Amber? Yeah. I just, and it just initial thoughts. It sounds like ignorance ignorance not being informed um and that's just the i feel like it, that fuels the stigma that's the st stigma personified in my opinion okay here's how i see it you think people <clears throat> hiv and aids and herpes should be on a list i think people I'm like this irresponsible <laughs> sex should be on a list People who know their status, they get tested. That's why they know their status. That's one, okay? Boom, in your face. Two, <laughs> usually people who know their status know about their status and how to take care of themselves and how to protect themselves and you as well. Not everybody in the STD community it knows that, but people who are open about their status and aware of their status and want change, they know it. That's one. Two, promiscuous people, because she mentioned hoes, you know. Um, just because you're promiscuous doesn't mean you're not sexually healthy. That's bullshit. I don't care. There's a lot of promiscuous people, and I know, and I said this last night, that are the most sexually responsible people that I know. The people you need to be worried about is the people with the one, two, three bodies they can be the most dangerous people too the people who have sex based off of vibes the people who have sex because i trust him and i've known him for years or i trust her and i know her for years and i know they telling me the truth the people who have sex just because they partner told them they got tested yeah those are the people who are the most dangerous to sleep with and if there was a way to put those people on a list, those are the people who need to go on the list because those type of people spread the virus. <laughs> the people who have sex without knowing nothing at all, without requiring to see STDs and still having sex are the most dangerous people. It's not people living with incurable STDs and it's not your promiscuous people. 
Those people I just described can fall under the ones who have one, two bodies, the ones that have 50 bodies, or even people who have STDs because there are people out here with STDs that are not disclosing as well. But irresponsible sex and dangerous people are not always the ones living with the lifelong STDs. It's not always the hoes, the promiscuous people. And the safe people are not always the ones that have one or two bodies. That's what I have to say about that. Facts. Facts. That's big facts. I was on the list. I was on the second list. Shane was talking about the people with the fewer bodies, but not required, not having the sex conversation. Out, not uh, using protection of any kind. I was on that list. And so I was down here thinking because society says, oh, because you aren't a hoe, because you ain't out here for everybody, that you good. But no, how I was going about doing what I was doing was the, was the opposite of good. But because society said it was good, I would literally, in, in my mind, somewhere judge people who were <clears throat> had most sexual partners or were considered on that whole list. So that was, that's the whole conversation that's going to upend a lot of people's thoughts and going to make them feel some type of way, which is why we got to continue to have it because of statements like what you just read. <clears throat> herpes, Shana said when she was able to tell the world about her herpes, that's when the truth just started flowing out of her. So I told the world about my herpes in December of 2020. But prior to that, I started a series on my YouTube channel called Confessions Moment which I have the shirt on now. And what that was, was that was my leading up. I didn't even know it. I didn't even know it. When I made my first confession on my YouTube channel, I had no idea that my final confession or my biggest confession was going to be telling the world I had herpes. At that point, I, I just wanted to create a safe space of telling these things that we were all going through by my, by my example. The fact that I had had an abortion in my past the fact that I had been in an abusive relationship, the fact that my relationship with my mother isn't picture perfect, um, the fact that I have lost two very close friends to death um, in different ways, so processing grief. So I was building up, creating this space for this transparency, not knowing that one day I would tell the world about my herpes. And when I told the world about my herpes, my biggest confession, essentially, that was like taking the lid off, essentially, for me, for my truth. Because though I had confessed other things, though I had talked about other taboo things, this herpes thing was by far the biggest as far as being stigmatized and the biggest as far as how it had affected my life in the in the course of the, the amount of time I had, you know, being diagnosed in 2018 to 2020, when I told the world those two years, um, more happened in those two years than probably happened into the 30 years prior to those years, those two years. And so the, the way that it changed my entire life by being able to talk about it and speak about it, my truth changed everything for me in a way that I didn't even know. And I'm still finding out I'm so comfortable with me now. Like Euphoria said, when she hears somebody say the word nappy or when Shana hears some tell her, somebody tell her they don't, you know, she doesn't love herself. She can just, it just rolls off her back. That's how it is for me. Somebody projects something on me. Oh, I was taking it personal, baby. And I had to come back. I was like, gonna cuss you out. I was like, gonna embarrass you. Now I'm just like, I mean, Literally, that means nothing to me because of <laughs> exactly or no, because you because you seem like you met. <laughs> and so I can genuinely feel that way and not feel like slighted or not feel like, oh, they're they have the upper hand or I look like I'm conceding or I look like I'm the weaker source because I'm not going at them like I traditionally would because I can just sit and rest in my peace and realize how powerful that how saying less how truly letting my energy speak, how powerful that is. And that was a full transformation for me because I was not always that person. Like if somebody, my sister was the quiet, more meek when she would literally call me to cuss people out for her. Like, Amber, can you call them and pretend like you're me and cuss them out? Or Amber, you know, can you call, call my phone bill and cuss them out because they overcharged me? Like I was the person who was going in. And now I'm just like, my energy's totally changed. And it's because I've been able to live walk except my truth 
all parts of it and, and not be stigma and not live under any stigma or any um, views of society, but truly live by me and what I think about myself, what I think about the world, what I know it to be. And that's um, changed my life. So I just wanted to say that. I love that. I love that. And I tell my clients that all the time. I was like, do you understand that you giving your peace out like Skittles or because all every time you're trying to prove you're not a punk? I was that person to be like, can't nobody pump fear in my heart. Nobody was going to tell me something without me not clapping back or getting in your face or being even mean. If you was telling me something mean, I was telling you something 10 times worse than what you just told me. I was a little firecracker, a little chihuahua. You know them dogs? They got the, the, the short dog syndrome. Yeah, I, that was me. <laughs> I was barking and clapping back because it was so important for me to let people know that I wasn't a punk and they couldn't punk me and they couldn't disrespect me. But in that, I was taking on their energy and I was becoming it versus protecting my peace. My peace is so valuable. It's valuable for me, my immune system for my son, my household, and the people that I love and I surround myself with. I cannot be giving out my reactions and my peace out like candy on, during Halloween. And that's exactly what I was doing. So quickly, I can lose my peace. No control over it. So willingly, I could use my peace. So willingly, I would go into a situation went ready to curse somebody out. Versus protecting my peace. Now I'm at this point in my life where my peace is priority. That's where my pride is at. I'm, I was prideful and that's why I was clapping back like that. That's why it was so important for me to prove to people that I wasn't no punk. That was my pride. My pride now has became not a flaw, but an attribute in my life because I put my pride on how I can protect my peace. You cannot get a reaction out of me. You don't deserve a reaction out of me. Period. If you mad, you can be mad by yourself because I'm happy and I'm at peace. Point blank, period. Euphoria. <laughs> I'm going to close all that out and say this, right? Being a cosmetologist, aka crown adjuster, I deal with a lot of different personalities all day, every single day. And you know, it's different because when you're at the hairstylist, you're expecting a stylist to have the tea, the dirt, the, you know, the average stylist. And I don't want to put this as a, uh, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? I don't want to put this out here as a label for all stylists, but the typical stylist is that. Even when I've looked at other stylists on YouTube, it's usually always a snappy, feisty personality, which used to be me, right? I too was that person where Oh, let me call my older sister because I'm the oldest of five kids. Let's call Sierra. She about to go ahead and beat this person up, that person up, that person up, and it's on. It's popping. Let's go. I used to be that. I was that older sister of just, I'm protecting everybody in this household. If you mess with any of my siblings, boy, girl, it don't matter. I'm coming through. I'm slicing your head off, and that's it. Don't ask no questions about it, right? But then I realized, like you said, I was letting everybody build me into what they wanted me to be this scary person this 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 kind to it's like, oh she's big scary it's like oh but i'm like i'm not even that i'm such a gentle giant like finally get to tell me it's like oh my gosh you're dope i realized when i decided to take my peace and make that the thing that brought everything to me even my clientele base changed and I see from now and then you know a few clients will come in that don't necessarily have that vibrate that vibration and I feel that now in my peace place these are people who are testing my peace they're coming into test to see if I DM what I say am I really this peaceful person am I really this person who's going to embody your personality or am I going to just exude my energy which one is it going to be I have that ability to do that every single day. I used to be the person where before my client comes, if my client try to front on me, yeah, I'm going to show them all these hundreds and fifties in my wallets. I'm, I'm stacking. I'm, yeah, I'm this. And I realized they don't need to see that because then, you know, I'm being judged for something that's just so, it can literally burn up and be gone. Why am I letting something that is material define me? 
when literally I am euphoria. The fact that you're here, we're going to have conversations about consciousness, elevating your spirit, drinking water, you know, you can sometimes have, you know, a, a meal that isn't as healthy as you would prefer, right? But just know that you have to do that in moderation, just sharing things like that instead of always wanting to be on go. Changed a lot about me, changed a lot about how I raised my son, how I'm a sister to my siblings, how I'm a daughter to my mother. I no longer, if I feel something's toxic around me, guys, I just observe and say, so why? Does it make you feel that way? Instead of engaging like, yeah, girl, uh uh-huh, yeah, I'm on that. Why do you feel like that about that person? Why did, why did, when they did that, how did that make you feel? Why did that trigger you? Because I always want to know the why anyways. That's the me. I always want to investigate and problem solve. I don't want to cause more coming onto the problem. But I didn't know that before my herpes. Because it took me realizing that I had such a huge voice that I would just share openly and be so vocal about everything. But then when I got herpes, it shut my throat chakra down. I wasn't that person anymore. But in that same breath, herpes was the thing that truly unlocked my real voice. See, I had a voice before. That was my ego's voice. But now my spirit's voice is unlocked. And now I know I can use both of them to keep me balanced. But I use my spirit voice more because I think it's more important that you hear what my spirit has to say. Because my spirit is a very good judge of character. My ego might make some of the worst people feel like gods and that's not good we don't want that so we just throw that out the window okay you go ahead I'm gonna let you out the bag when it's time when somebody's really trying to you know attack me in the worst way but before we bring you up we want to use you over here and that truth that right there helped set me free guys and I just hope that herpes can do that for you as well herpes can show you that having a voice in something where you're literally healing other people, allowing other people to come into the same space as you and resonate with you and hear your story, hear your truth and hear things that you've gone through and how they molded you to be such a beautiful woman, man, whatever you know you identify with. However, herpes has built you to become that versus how it did everything else. People need to hear that. So when you truly let herpes unlock your uh, throat chakra, it's gonna be a beautiful experience, guys. I can say that it's gonna take time months weeks a year two took me a few years i didn't come out with my herpes until what last year i got diagnosed back in 2011 so just i mean really imagine how much of my voice i had to hold back to truly find this place now that i'm in so i just want to extend that to you guys herpes definitely unlocked my truth so thank you herpes good night <laughs> thank you herpes thank you all right thank you wrap it up i love that um i'm just i'll start off the wrap taking it all in that was good that was good i'll start off the wrap up then while you're taking it in I just want to say be mindful of energy vampires, especially if you're learning how to protect your peace. Um, This can come in even the people that you think are not toxic in your life. It could be a best friend. It can be your mama. It could be a cousin. It can be somebody. But people are going to bring to you their problems. So you have to be mindful of that. I have people that bring bring me their problems and expect me to make them, you know, reassure them in their problems. And with me is I don't want to take in that energy. Key thing to not taking in the energies, vampires energy is to mind your business. You don't have to insert yourself in everybody's problems. People's problems are their own and not yours. If you have problems, by your damn self, you have no business taking on anyone's problem. That is your sister who has the kids who are bad and she can't handle her kids. So she need auntie or uncle to come through, ignore it. That is the mother that keep asking you for money, but you ain't got no money to give to, to piss in the pot for your damn self. Ignore it. That is the best friend who keep going through it with her freaking boyfriend. And this time he done did something really serious and she needs you to come right out with her. Ignore it. 
Stop taking on other people's problems and protect your peace. And I'm going to leave it at that. Herpes can never. I'll say this. I'm taking it to this song by Erica Badu. Okay. Basically, it says, I'm in the kitchen. I'm cleaning the dishes and something, something, something. I'll call you back. Somebody could call my phone today. If I don't feel like answering the phone, I'm not going to answer the phone. You do not have to extend your energy to everybody. <laughs> this phone here, this thing, it has notifications for a reason. It'll notify someone to contact you. Even this thing up here, because the cell phone replicates this here. This will notify you that somebody wants to contact you. But unless you want to contact that person, you have to consciously take that moment and say, what do I want to focus my energy on today? Me, my growth, my peace, my truth, and live in that space. That space is so freeing. <laughs> you won't even want to be the person who answers everybody's phone calls anymore. You understand why it's so important that you don't answer everybody's phone calls when you tap into that space. So I just want to leave you off with that and say, enjoy peace and speak your truth, guys, because it can save someone's life. Peace and love. Thanks. <clears throat> I co-sign with everything they said. I find that when people see you protecting your peace, they might call you selfish. They might say, oh, you don't answer the phone no more. Oh, you this and that. They're going to project onto you how they might be feeling about you. But it all goes back to how do you feel about you? And protecting my peace was the best thing I've ever started to do to show myself love, to care for myself to be my own baby by giving myself what I need first before I give somebody else what they need. Am I good first? What do I need to be good? And if somebody can't respect that you're doing that for you, then you have to question whether that's a person you want in your space. Mind your business, drink your water, drink your tea, meditate, say your affirmations. Herpes can never. I love you all, and we'll see you next time. Ever. Peace.